Get your coffee and join me today to talk about adoptions and foster care. Get your coffee. We'll be right back. My college offers classes that meet my educational and career goals. With opportunities outside of the classroom where the faculty know me by name. My college can prepare me for my career. I can earn an associate's degree and transfer credits to a bachelor's. My college is a state college within the university system of Georgia. My college offers courses that fit my schedule. It's where excellence begins. We are. We are. We are. We are GHC, Georgia Highlands College. Welcome to GHC Coffee Break. I'm very excited about my guest this morning. Um, it's Bronson Long, and he's a professor at Georgia Highlands College. And Mitch, I last name Jolly. M Mitch, oh, that'll be easy to remember. Happy, yes, Mitch Jolly. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, here from Three Rivers Pastor Church at that Three church. Rivers church. Yes, ma'am. And you're also involved in something called Global Impact. That's correct. Yes, ma'am. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But let's kind of get started. Um, one of the things that um, GHC prog our programming tries to do is let the community know what's going on in the community. Yeah. Um, but beyond that, um, how may they, they may get involved in um, awareness about foster and adoption. Um, I know, Bronson, um, you were going to talk a little bit about what it's like to be a foster parent. Correct, yes. Uh, my wife and I have been a, a foster parent for a little over a year now, uh, and it's, it's been a, a tremendous experience. So we, we became aware that this was a huge need in Floyd County. Floyd County is one, one of the worst in the state in terms of just a sheer need for foster parents. And, and we thought about it a lot, prayed about it, and we decided to get involved. We're, we're involved through a, a Christian-based group called Faith Bridge, which works very closely with, with defects here. And um, we, we, got, we, got, we got this little girl about a year ago and uh, have had her ever since. And uh, it's just been a wonderful experience help loving on her and nurturing her and just, just working with her through the whole process of, of fostering. And see, um for to me, foster care would be very difficult. And it, how do you get ready to if? Because the, the idea of foster care is to get the the family reconnected, and you know we we want families to stay together, and not be split apart. But there are times, of course, we know that that's not a, a possibility. But when it is, you know, to have them for six months, a year, whatever it happens to be, while they're while the parents are going through their process of being able to get their child back, you know, to give it up, to give that child up after that time, how difficult that would be, you know. Um. It is, it is. Uh, we haven't had to do that yet, but we've certainly had to grapple with the possibility. Right. And that's something that we talked about at great length in, in much of our training. Okay. And one example that, that came to us in our training that really still sticks with me is, is a family who f has been fostering for quite a while, and they've had to go through this, you know, giving up a number of kids who have gone back to their family. And you're absolutely right. That is the ideal solution for the, the, the family to get their act together, to go through the whole process, and reunify with their child. Uh, but from the end of a, a foster parent, the, the thing you have to think about is there's, there's another child who needs you. So we have this family that I mentioned, they said that what they would do is every time where they, you know, successfully turned a, family, a child back over to their family, they may have had six months, eight months, a year even, they would recognize that they're going to be sad. You know, they would mourn a little bit. They would say they'd take a weekend and eat donuts and watch movies together as a family. Yeah, just to kind of bond as a family and then dust themselves off and say, well, yes, we're hurting, but guess what? There's another child out there that's hurting a lot more than we are. And they need us. Because the need in our area, and I'm sure this is not just Floyd County, but is, is very great. My understanding is sometimes there's not enough uh, foster parents to take the children in this, in this county, and they actually are kind of farmed out, basically, yeah. to other counties. Yeah, and you see, think about that from a logistical point of view. You know, we deal with things like visitation with, with our uh, foster daughter's birth mother on a regular basis. And that, of course, that's to, to help keep the bond and hopefully right. to reunify ultimately. But what if you're a child and you've been sent to Macon or been sent to Savannah? Mm -hmm. How would you do that? I, I mean, I, I know they do do it, but it's, it's a nightmare to arrange all that. Or, or court dates where the child has to appear yeah. and on and on. And so it's, it's, it's really, for our, for, for our community, children being shipped out is, a, it is, is, is double trauma to them. They're already traumatized enough. And really, we need more foster parents. And, 
as I mentioned, sometimes you, you just you may have to realize, okay, I may have to deal with some emotional uh, you know, hurt in, in giving up a child, but the need is so great that you know, the hurt that, that the, uh, these children have is, is much worse than anything you would experience. And the joy that you do experience from helping those and seeing the, you know, children succeed and, and having another one come in, uh, I think is, is, is worth uh, the price you do pay. Yeah, the age, um, what would you say the age group, literally from birth all the way up to, to an older teen? Absolutely. I mean, it really is, the, 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 it ranges the whole gamut of, of ages, and, and the system is um, really designed for that in many ways. I mean, there's, the system has a lot of problems, but they, they do deal with that phenomenon of, of you know, all age ranges, really. Now, Mitch, I believe you said you were involved in the adoption or have adopted or something? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, around 2006, uh, we, uh, my wife and I were exceptionally concerned about the number of foster children and the lack of homes in our county. We wanted to do something organizationally um, through our church and other organizations we worked with, but we also recognized that it was a personal need as well, that the scriptures are clear, that God cares about foster and adoptive kids and orphans and, and widows, and it was part of our job to do something about it. And, and so uh, we jumped in the game. I'm also a, a board member for the Department of Family and Children's Services. Okay. And, and knowing the need, uh, we wanted to do something personal, and so we got involved in the life of a, a little fella, two-year-old, uh, out of our county and fostered him and became his adoptive parents as well. So you were actually able to adopt your, your child? Yes, ma'am, we were. We went through a very lengthy, difficult process, and, and even the process that the department worked so well on and did, did such a phenomenal job with uh, made us realize that it's not just a responsibility of the citizens of Floyd County to do something about it. It's also uh, a challenge that needs to be addressed at multiple levels and really began the journey for us getting involved with organizations and building organizations who try to address the challenge at, at levels beyond the actual home fostering and adopting as well. Uh, do you have statistics about what, what kind of numbers we're looking at of the need? It ranges. Uh, 400 to 500 kids in care on, on any individual month, and it usually increases at the, at the start of school due to um, school counselors recognizing need when kids come back from their summer break because they're not around uh, mm. uh, authority figures. And so when they come back to school, the numbers usually spike. Uh, and, and as the year grinds on and more foster parents are recruited, those numbers can fluctuate. Uh, I think right now, um, less than 20 homes available in Roman Floyd County to take. 20 homes for 400 mm -hmm. kids. Yeah, that's right. Now that number fluctuates well, as well. Well, of course, but because, still. Right. I mean, that, that's... Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it's obvious that the number of kids and the number of homes don't even come close to matching mm -hmm. and the economic impact uh, from the department having to transport children all over the state that costs money that's not free gas isn't free cars are not free and so the economic impact of that number of children in care is huge and so those are things that can be alleviated with foster parents and proper training yeah I heard and you resources about training how important Absolutely. that mm -hmm. is yeah um, and I'm thinking, okay, so they get sent to another county even. Well, I'm sure that county is probably not, you know, there's not a plethora of foster care either. So, I mean, right. you know, if you look right. at it statewide, it's not just a, a, a Floyd County issue. It's really a state issue a state and probably issue. even more bigger than that, Absolutely. to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. And in many ways, our county is, is putting a burden on other counties by shipping right, that's kids what I was, out. You know, and, they're, and they're probably trying, well, maybe they have 10 and only need five here, but... Right, and, and it's the personal impact on the child as well exactly. because they're uprooted from their school mm -hmm. and their friends. familiar surroundings, and they're taken somewhere else. And so the available resources in their town to help them are no longer available because they've gone somewhere else. And so the impact is devastating, particularly in the life of the child. And, and the greatest need is really with teenagers. Yeah, it's that's really what easy, I was... Yeah, to love a little baby. Like we got a little two-year-old, a uh, little fella, and that's not hard. It's hard to take a teenager and, and some older kids who have may have already been in the system that's right. for a while. That's mm -hmm. right. And that's a great need. It's a great need in our county. And that pro pro and there is so much negative uh, uh, publicity, for lack of a better word, about right. foster um, families, foster care. Right. Um, and I know from um, talking to, of course, Bronson and um, and the Department of Family and Children's Services right. that um, the the foster care 
families are vetted. They're not just, you know, you, there is a process. So can you talk to address the process a little bit? Oh, absolutely. It's, it's uh, an, a pretty extensive vetting process. Everything from a background check to fingerprinting uh, to, you know, mandated training, uh, all kinds of paperwork, a home inspection. Um, it, it is quite extensive. So I, I'm sure the media, of course, there are, there's always, you know, bad apples that in any, any thing you're dealing with, and yeah. so there probably have been with foster parents, but the media will only report the bad, right? Exactly, that's there what I was thinking. Yeah. They don't talk about, oh, look, all the, all the good things that are going on. Right. That doesn't bring news, I guess. But, but that, that, they don't, you know, that, they don't pick people off the street randomly and, and right. choose them to be foster parents. You have to be approved, and it is, and it, and it is important they do that as well. Oh, absolutely. And, and so once you go through all that process and it's decided, okay, Bronson Long and, and family are going to be a foster parent, or, or Mitch and family mm -hmm. are going to be a foster parent, or f foster, because I'm assuming you didn't intend to adopt when you started the process. We intended to foster to adopt. We started the oh, okay. process with the intention of fostering and with the intention to adopt if the child became available. Oh, okay. So you did kind of already have that in, in your mindset. We did. We recognized. And I think one of the things that's real important for foster parents to recognize is what they can do. Yeah. You can't do everything, but you mm -hmm. can do what you can do. And we recognized that we could foster to adopt. It would be very difficult for us the way we're wired emotionally to just See, that's foster. Me. And, and that's okay. And, that, and one of the things I try to tell pro prospective parents is just do what you can okay. and, and do what you are able to do. And, and by so doing, that provides positive experiences with the department and other private organizations who are foster, fostering and, and, and working adoption so that other families would be encouraged to get in as well. I think sometimes when families try to do more than they can, they end up having very negative experiences mm -hmm. and that reflects poorly on the whole process. Right. And it can be very positive. Yeah, and, and to add to that, when my wife Jeanette and I were looking at this, we, we consider that very carefully. And while there is a great need for teenagers, we have a five-year-old daughter, and right. our experiences are with small children. You know, we have nieces and nephews, and we're, we're very familiar with small children, but less so with teenagers. So we've, we've after considerable discussion and, and prayer, we felt like we're really best suited for a small child. And so that's what we ended up taking as, as a foster child, as, as, a, as a little little bitty girl. Right. And that is what I would encourage other people considering right. this to do. What is your place in life? What child are you best able to take? And there are some people who are more more uh, more ready to take teenagers. Absolutely, quite frankly, That's it's, right. it's very. And note that just as Mitch was saying, it, don't feel bad if you can only take teenagers, or only take small children. There's plenty of need. They'll, they'll find kids for you. Don't. Yeah. Don't worry about that. Yeah, absolutely. We, we even looked at our family. We had two biological sons at that point, six and four, and a lot of boy clothes. And so we thought, geez, we could take a two-year-old. Let's stair-step them. Yeah. And, and quite literally, the department, there was a two-year-old available. And so you just simply do what you can. And I think that's a really good point. And that's the same right. for us. We're, we're using a lot of hand-me-downs from our five-year-old for our, our you know, 14-month-old uh, foster child. Right. I think that's really important because, and also considering if you have a little girl, and not to say impugn on teenagers, but you, you might be more hesitant to have a, a 16 or 14 year right. old young man come into your home with, with a small child. So yeah. they take all of those things into consideration of what you as a family need and can do. That's right. Mm -hmm. okay. That's right. And you want to be successful in what you do. Yeah. Well, Absolutely. it makes it a better experience all around, like you yeah. said. That's right. And, and it's, it's important to have a good evaluation process so that you know what is coming into your home. And, and various organizations do a great job of that. We have a foster home, James House, that we run through Global Impact. And, and it's an evaluation home so that the child comes into care and they're able to evaluate what the child's needs oh. are so that prospective foster parents like ourselves know what we're getting into. And so it's an oh, opportunity okay. for a child to get stable, evaluate their needs, and then place them in a home that is suited for them. And so one of the things we're working to do is build that process stronger so that families like ourselves know what we're really getting into and can tackle it and do it successfully. See, that makes me feel even better a little bit because I didn't, that's one of, would have been one of my concerns if I got a teenager um, that was totally not suited for, for my home. That's but. Right. Um, Gosh, this time is passing, passing so fast. We've got to take a break. Get your coffee and we'll be right back.
Looks like it's done. Don't let salmonella get funky with your chicken. On average, one in six Americans will get a foodborne illness this year. You can't see these microbes, but they might be there. So learn the right temperature to cook each type of meat. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. Welcome back to GHC Coffee Break. As you can see, we've uh, made a little shift. Um, Bronson Long has uh, stepped down so that Jeff, the president of uh, Global Impact, can join us a little bit to talk about Global Impact, which is a program in the community. But before, we kind of left off with you, Mitch. I, I kind of like to pick up where we left off. Because um, my concern was, what, what do we do in the case that a child in the middle of the night um, needs to be placed? And you were telling a moment about the home. Right. Uh, Explain that part. Right. Uh, we began, of course, we recognized the need. My wife and I were trying to address it personally with the things we could do, but we also noticed there was an organizational need. There was a need for more homes. There was a mm -hmm. need for a child to, to get stable when they came into care. So we were working with a local organization to build the home that we're currently using. We visited multiple sites. Uh, constructed a floor plan that would flow to, to house the maximum number that we actually could house without being, uh, without being a group home, which would be six children. And, and so we put that thing together for the purpose of having children come into care to get stable uh, okay. with the maximum number of six. It could be staffed with parents that, that, that worked for us. Okay. And their job was to evaluate and help get those children in a good place so that they could be placed in a more permanent setting and so we raised the money built that house uh, debt free and, and that's it's awesome. being used for that purpose today well and you know when you think of uh, uh, global impact and all of the people that you guys are getting involved in it's it's state local faith-based mm -hmm. um, you know how important it really is it goes back to it takes a community to raise a child and, and the faith-based organizations were actually the first people they were the first social workers Mm -hmm. So to be able to have that connection and, and, and working together is what we need to do in our community. Mm -hmm. So Global Impact, tell us a little bit about how that got started and, and the people that y'all have involved. Yeah, actually uh, Global Impact International uh, was, uh, was actually started out of our church, Three Rivers Church. Um, it is a, but it is a separate organization. Uh, it is a nonprofit. Um, last, uh, of course, you know, we've, we've known about, and you've, you've heard from, from Bronson and Mitch already that, uh, we've known about this crisis in Floyd County on, on foster care for some time. And, uh, last year, uh, you know, we wanted to take it further and how can, how can we help? How can we, uh, uh, get involved in, and, and help correct the situation. And at the same time, you know, the governor had uh, asked Commissioner Horton and, and uh, Reverend Miles to uh, head up a, a coalition statewide because they knew that they needed help, and particularly from the faith community. And so uh, we stepped in uh, with, uh, with Global Impact and, and James House, which uh, Mitch just talked about. Uh, we uh, acquired that house uh, and uh, uh, set it up as a six-bedroom uh, assessment home. And to know the system, um, kids do get moved around a lot mm -hmm. because uh, they, you know, the, the system hasn't had adequate time to assess them and figure out what a good placement is. And so you can imagine being uprooted several times is it's, it's devastating to the kids just one time, but multiple times yeah. is, it's awful. So what we wanted to do with James House was build a model that could actually be duplicated either in Floyd County or, or in, in other places to help DFACs and the other child placing agencies um, have time to, you know, to get those emergency placements in and then to adequately assess them. Um, and so uh, anyway, James House, we, we uh, started that in May and opened the house in October and have kids and, in, in there and uh, it's, you know, uh, operating very nicely. Um, and then uh, on the heels of, of uh, uh, James House, uh, you know, of course, we wanted to uh, figure out how we could do more to help the system uh, in general. And uh, uh, the system uh, uh, 
you know, is broken on a lot of different levels. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, what we wanted to do was bring together, as you said, uh, government, private, faith-based, all together uh, to basically uh, construct a hub for foster care and adoption. Because uh, one of the things that, uh, you know, that we found too in our, in, in just working in the system and working in the community was th there were a lot of people that had a great passion mm -hmm. for these kids mm -hmm. and, and this, but they had no idea how to plug in. Right. And, and it isn't just, uh, uh, you know, wanting to become a foster parent or wanting to become a, uh, someone that can provide respite care or uh, it's people that uh, just want to be able to provide meals or provide some kind of mentoring support or transportation or if uh, people need construction work you know mm -hmm. if they, people can you know find a place where they can come and plug in mm -hmm. and so uh, you know our vision for um, well then, you know, the RFP for the Southeast Elementary Building right. came up and it was, <laughs> it was, uh, you know, one of those timing things. I mean, it was just, wow, we, wow. when we uh, heard about it, we were just like, what a fantastic opportunity. And so, you know, we submitted a proposal back in August uh, and uh, uh, actually uh, are just finalizing it and are gonna take uh, possession of Southeast Elementary on, I believe it's the 29th of, of this month. Wow. And so, uh, and we have a kickoff event uh, planned for Sunday night, May 1, which uh, we're gonna be advertising and, and uh, uh, getting people out to bring awareness to, uh, you know, the foster care issue in Floyd County, but also the orphan situation worldwide. Yeah. And so, uh, anyway. That's, a, that's awesome. And one of the things that I, I'm the Human Service Program Coordinator at Georgia Highlands, and I've been in human services for, well, longer, we, we won't talk about how long. But, um, you know, I worked for many years with uh, disabilities, children and adults with disabilities. And um, in education, we had an IEP. Um, an individual education plan and with the adults with um, disabilities we had an ISP an individual service plan but when I think about the foster care just as much as an education plan or fostering and figuring out what they need the foster parents that child knowing and creating a plan for that child evaluating seeing what their needs are and to make that match that to me is that's that just well, that's right. awesome. Right. <laughs> and to be able to have that under one roof, right? Which is one of the challenges now. There's so many services are available, but they're so scattered. And, and people for, don't know about all. They of them. don't know about all of them, and and often don't have the ability to get to all of the services. And to be able to work that plan under one roof can facilitate reunification and, and bringing restoration and wholeness to that to that family unit. Yeah, our our goal is uh, ultimately that not one child goes out of Floyd County. Right now, uh, over 70% of our kids that go into care in Floyd County go out of county. Um, it's 70%. And, um, and so, you know, our goal is, again, we're gonna provide services for uh, under at Southeast Elementary, which by the way, we, we have named this project Restoration Rome. Restoration and we do have a website for res Restoration Rome, but. What is that website? Uh, it's uh, restorationrome.org. Okay. Um, uh, but, you know, so not only are we going to provide services for the kids, the biological parents, the foster parents, uh, but we're, we're wanting to attack this uh, foster care issue mm -hmm. uh, from all angles. And so, I mean, that will include, you know, prevention, you know, legislative issues, et cetera. So we want to do uh, uh, much more over there than just provide services so you know uh, ultimately I mean the goal is to reduce the number of kids going into care yeah. uh, but the other is to uh, promote and recruit uh, more foster parents to come into the system and it is it right now it is it's a very you know onerous process mm -hmm. uh, for for parents to go through and but you know you wouldn't believe just having all of these different services 
under one roof, uh, how much it simplifies the process. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and the other part of it is, is that uh, it's, it's also daunting because my, my wife and I are also uh, uh, foster. We, we took more uh, the route that, uh, that Mitch and Jen took. We want to foster to adopt. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, that process is just, uh, it, it, you know, it's, it, it, it's so difficult. So, it, you know, if we can bring uh, the community, as you said, yep. together around families mm -hmm. as well, that uh, we can provide what we call uh, care communities. Oh, I like uh, that. Um, which we have, we have adopted the, uh, the Promise 686. Uh, it's Live the Promise. They're a group uh, uh, out of Atlanta. And they actually have formal, got a formal process of building community, communities of care around uh, uh, you know, foster parents. And you can imagine, so when people look at that and they're like, wow, this process and fostering looks like it's gonna be difficult or whatever, we wanna also provide that support function for them. So it isn't, it isn't quite such a daunting uh, you know, uh, thing for them when they come in. Yeah. Wow. This is particularly why the faith community is so well suited to address this, this challenge that's given to us to address and, and, and because of the people resources and the care and the love mm -hmm. and desire to address those things with the love of Christ to come around a family to support them whatever the child needs whatever the family needs so that they can focus on parenting and directing that child and, and working with the, the biological parents to, to make things whole and to see restoration take place and so all those resources brought to bear on that challenge can make a difference. And I, I when you said community of care I just felt all fuzzy inside because <laughs> that to me that as a human service professional and, and a teacher and teaching other people to become human service professionals are I can't learn them anything I facilitate mm -hmm. uh, that I have that idea of, of the community of care that it, it again it's that whole idea of it takes everyone to, to um, raise a child, it, you know, the village. You've, we've heard that saying all our lives. When I was growing up, and I'm older, um, we, we did. The, the neighborhood knew the kids, and the kids, you, you would get on to your child, but their child next door because they're all, it was that community. So I just absolutely love that, that perspective of the community of care. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Unfortunately, our time is about up. Is there any last word that you would like to say before we? Uh, uh, not other than I guess give a plug for that May one event, which will be uh, will be uh, getting more information out to the community. And please visit the Restoration Rome uh, website as it's coming up. And you can tell you know if you've got a passion for these kids and this system, then that's the way to plug in. Okay, get your coffee. We will be right back. My college offers classes that meet my educational and career goals. With opportunities outside the classroom. Where the faculty know me by name. My college can prepare me for my career. I can earn an associate's degree and transfer credits toward my bachelor's. My college is a state college within the University System of Georgia. My college is affordable. It's close to home. My college has online opportunities. It's where excellence begins. We are. We are. We are GHC, Georgia Highlands College. Welcome back to GHC Coffee Break. I, I, I can't help but grin and, and I feel so silly that, you know, oh, she's grinning. But um, I just light up when I think about what you guys are doing and the possibilities for our community. Uh, during break, I was sharing that idea of uh, your community of care and how much just that, that two words. Wow, I'm just I'm overwhelmed and feel so positive about the things that you guys are going to be doing and the people that you're going to be helping. I hope everyone gets a chance to visit visit the website. We'll see you next time on GHC Coffee Break.